All right, so this is our mobile toolbox slash service truck. And we're gonna get the compression tester out here. We actually went through and tested the compression on this as we do most of the tractors when they come in so we know what we've got. Uh, this has got 105 on both sides, right and left. But for video purposes, we will redo it. There's a nice Capri flex head ratchet. These are really nice ratchets. All right, so to do compression tests on most small engines, this is how you go about it. Note that there are a lot of small engines that have compression release mechanisms in them, and you won't get an accurate compression reading, but it'll still tell you if you got a dead cylinder, and it'll also tell you the condition of the cylinder to some degree. You know, if you'll notice one's worse than the other, or if you do enough with compression releases, you can get an idea of what they kind of read in good shape with compression release and what they don't. But this has no compression release, so this will be your your true reading. So take your spark plugs out first, obviously, both sides. You want to do this with the engine cold. That'll give you a true reading. With the engine hot, it doesn't give you a true reading because metal expands and rings and everything else. And if you got a lot of oil in there and blow by, it'll start sealing up the compression. So best to do on a cold engine. Oh, this is just an inexpensive compression test. This is the deluxe one. Actually, Maddox is Harbor Freight. OTC Tools is the same one with a different piece of cardboard behind the gauge. And uh, these are, I don't know, anywhere from probably $50 to $80 for this kit. The thing I really like about this is it's got this T metal screw in. It makes the job much easier and much faster. These are different sizes for different cars, different engines. Big and small equipment. But this is your common 14 millimeter spark plug thread. This has got an O-ring on it, so you put it in by hand, get it bottomed out, and just give it a, a, a little snug. You don't have to go too crazy, but you want it to seal. So you want to have a good battery charged up so it gets good cranking choke all the way open and the throttle all the way open so both butterflies are all the way open you get all the air into the engine choke off throttle full here's the gauge here we go so this battery is probably needs a charge but that gives you an idea we're at a hundred and three ish shall we guess As I said, we were at 105 when we did it a few days ago when the tractor came in, but close enough, there's gonna be some variation, but a few pounds is nothing. Cranking over faster might even make a little bit of difference, hard to say, but you're good there. So kind of rule of thumb on these Onan B-Series, and it's really, the manual does have specs, but it's really a little bit left up to opinion and, and uh, how the, action, uh, the engine actually runs. If you're burning oil, if you feel like you're low on power or not. So they say anything under 80 pounds roughly should be rebuilt. Um, we've had them in here running at 60, 65 pounds. Might smoke a little bit, might start a little bit hard, but they actually uh, have plenty of power and do all right. So it's all, all relative and how you feel. Um, new, I can't find specs, but I'm going to guess they were 125 to 150 because we've had them in at 130 pounds plus. I would say anything above 90 is definitely good. Anything above 100 is really good. And you just kind of kind of go from there. Like I said, we've had them run at 65 pounds and, and you can keep on going and, and do your thing till you feel like it's using too much oil or no power. So it just gives, gives us a rough idea of if the engine's got two good cylinders, the condition of, it, of the engine, if it's worth putting time and money into and if we're going to be comfortable selling it to a, a customer and, and hopefully they'll get 10, 20, 30, 40 more years out of it. All right, this is the other cylinder. So both are, are close to each other. They say that you want to be within, you know, 10 or 15% of, of the other cylinder at most. 
again, you're talking about a, a 20, 30, 40 year old plus machine. You can't get too picky. These are kind of book specs and stuff. And then when these things are new and, and dealer spec'd out, um, if you've got 100 on one side and 90 on the other, you're absolutely fine. If you got, you know, 120 on one side and, and 80 on the other, there's probably an issue. Again, you're going to have to judge by how, how it runs, how you're happy by the performance and, and whatnot. Um, just because it says, you know, 75 pounds on one cylinder and, and 85 on the other, it doesn't mean you got to rebuild it. It doesn't mean you got a huge problem. Uh, these are all just kind of guidelines. So that's how you do a compression test on a small engine on this own end. Like I said before, if you have some Briggs and Kohlers and, and Tecumsehs and, and, and probably some own ends, there's a compression release and it's not going to give you a true true reading. The compression release helps it start easier. So it does just that. It releases compression until the engine hits a, a certain RPM when it's firing. But again, if you're reading zero, then you know you got a bad cylinder. Or if you got a big difference between the two, then you know you've got an issue. And if you do enough of the compression release engines, you'll get to know what a baseline is and at least get an idea on, on what the condition of the engine is. So obviously if you've got zero compression, you've got either a broken rod or a valve issue. If your compression's low, it can be multiple things, bad rings, bad valves, bad head gasket. Um, there's some other things you can have going on, but those are the common, most common things. And sometimes low compression doesn't mean the engine needs a rebuild. It could be something simple like the valves are dirty, the valves need adjustment, the valves are broke, um, they could be replaced if there's not ma major internal damage, bad valve spring. Uh, something as simple as a head gasket will give you little to no compression or sometimes it'll just be lower than the other side and, and run halfway decent with a, a bad head gasket. It depends on the engine and how bad the gasket is. So nothing set in stone, just use it as a tool to judge and to ask more questions if, if something comes up that doesn't look right.